You know, if you've been paying attention to the landscape of women's sport, sports, there is no doubt that women's sports is on the uptick. From viewership, from the level of talent, from the investments, from the NIL space, to programs, administrations, investing. Um, our time is now. And no matter what the narratives people try to go out there and create, uh, women's basketball is a legitimate entity in, in the sports world. One of the things that we're fighting for right now is to get units for our play. If my team had received the units, our men's team would have received for the run we made last year, we would have brought in thousands of dollars. So what I'm trying to get the Oxford community to do is to catch up because the rest of the world has caught up on the fact that women's sports is legit and it's, re and it's real. And so I'm not going to allow people to make it seem like what we do doesn't matter. I'm not going to allow people to make it seem like I haven't earned everything that I've gotten. I'm not going to make it seem like our women are less than because that is a false narrative out there. And the Oxford community needs to catch up to that. And that's the truth. We should have been, we should have, we should have had Club Red up in here. It should have been packed in here. How does a team that goes to the Sweet 16 that only has two losses not have an average of 5,000 people in the stands? How? You know what it is? It's the lack of value. And it needs to change. And I don't care who's upset about me saying this because I'm going to speak the truth. Women's sports is a legitimate entity. And maybe because Oxford right now doesn't think so. The rest of the world has caught on. So the Oxford community needs to catch on. The Ole Miss campus community needs to catch on. There are games that are sold out. The ticket for the LSU South Carolina game was $3,000. There was a sports, a, a sports, a volleyball, sports, pro sports sold out. There have been 14, 16, 11, 10,000 people that have been at women's sports games in college. We need to catch up. And it's disappointing. It's disappointing when my team runs out here and have won a whole lot. And we, and we don't get the crowd support we deserve. And some people will say, oh, she's just complaining. She needs to shut up. Well, I'm not shutting up. I'm not shutting up. You know why? Because when I turn on the TV, when I look around, when we go to other places, women's sports is a real thing. And so I'm going to be the voice for that here because our community needs to be better, man. And it's disappointing. And so I needed to say that because I'm going to be the truth teller around here. Now, for our faithful fans, they may be few, but they faithful, and I love them to death. I asked one guy to, to go ahead and, and do the whole uh, – it's a football player who took his shirt off, and he came out and did that for, for me. So the love is there. I'm not crying for love. We get the love. We know what the love feels like. We just need to catch up. You know, we don't have to be a football school, a men's basketball school, a baseball school. We're a women's golf school. We're a women's track and field school. We're a women's basketball school. Catch up, Oxford. Catch up, Ole Miss community. Got to be better. So that's my statement. Questions? 
Coach, you guys had 27 points on turnovers. So was that a point tonight? I know you guys defend well usually, but it just seemed like you guys were playing fast at times. Yeah, I mean, we, 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 the emphasis was to guard heavy in the beginning. Uh, that went out the door, third and fourth quarter. That just shows a lack of maturity as a team. And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. Like, we just have to grow, you know? We have to be able to handle success and keep it. Um, and so it kind of just unraveled in the third and fourth. And I was really disappointed with that effort. But, uh, you know, because we, we shouldn't have had 17 turnovers for what? Uh, you know, we just had six turnovers, and then we go have 17 turnovers and still score 81 points. Imagine if we didn't have those turnovers. So, again, there's a maturity level that we have to grasp, and we're still working on it. But uh, we just had the emphasis to really suffocate uh, Florida by shrinking the floor, and you saw that in the first half. I wanted to ask you about that moment uh, with, with Sakaya. Um, I guess just for, yeah. for a young player, how big are those learning moments? Huge. Um, she didn't say what I said. She <laughs> she skipped over that, which was probably a smart decision. I just got in her face and just told her, like, you have to be better. You know, you 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 have shown better, so be better. You know, I didn't I didn't cuss or anything. I just said you have to be better for us. Um, and I'm gonna hold her to that because there are freshmen all over the country that are balling out of control. And so all I'm asking her to do in those moments is to step up and be better. And I thought she made some really great positive plays, you know, four steals, five points. But, you know, I, I, I want to push her to be better because she is a true point guard. And we don't have a true point guard, and she is one. Um, and so that's something that um, I'm definitely looking for her to do, and that's why I kept her in the game. I'm not yanking her just because, you know, she didn't – do something right, I wanted to teach it as a teachable moment, especially because at halftime, we talked about how important it was for the third quarter to come out strong. Just 19 games through, we, we know you guys are successful in, in a bunch of different areas, mm -hmm. but what do you think is the, maybe the biggest challenge your team still has to overcome? Just, just being true defensively, you know, four quarters. I, I, we haven't, Alabama, I think we had four quarters where I was like, whoa, we look really, really good defensively. Um, and so we got to we got to we got to be better uh, for three more quarter for put we have to put four quarters together and we hadn't done that yet. Again, like I said, you know, a lot of people said, oh, that means they're going to suck because I kept saying our best basketball is in February. But people have to understand that I'm holding my team to a standard. We were just in the sweet 16. <laughs> Like, I'm not saying we're going to be awful. I'm saying we're going to really put it all together by February. So hopefully by that time we can really hang our hats on four quarters of suffocating defense. But I do want to credit Florida. It's very tough to do because they're super quick, super athletic, and uh, they make it very difficult for us. So we're going to play them again, and we're going to have to make some changes. Coach, what, what made you – you want to come in here and, and, and say what you said again? Is there something that sparked it? Yeah, you know, I'm just – I'm an advocate for women's sports, you know. Um, and you see, I didn't just talk about my program. I talked about women's basketball. I talked about women's soccer, women's golf, women's volleyball. Like, you know, Ole Miss doesn't have to just be a men's school. And, that, and that's, why, that's why I'm trying to educate our fans. Like, Ole Miss can be an everything school. You get what I'm saying? Like, I know as, I know football's king. You know, I get it. You know, I, I go to the games. I support them. I, I support Chris Baird. I support Mike Bianco. I support all sports. But don't make it, like, it doesn't have to be less than. You come to a women's game, give me one person that comes to a women's game and doesn't enjoy it, any sport. And so why can't we be an everything school? Because that's a destination spot. It's happening up the street. We went to that game. It was 7,000 people in there. You get what I'm saying? I don't even want to call their names. But it happened, you know? So And, and, and they didn't go to Sweet 16. They hadn't had 320 win seasons. So why can't we do it? Why do we, why do we have to limit ourselves? And so, and you know, I'm going to have my people clip this. I'm putting this out. Because I'm an advocate, I'm strong enough, I'm, I'm okay with people, you know, 
I'm not okay with the disrespect. I block people on social media that disrespect me, but I'm going to be an advocate for women's sports. I got two daughters, you know, and, 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 and I'm trying to make – Oxford is a really, really cool place, but it needs to be a cool place for every sport. We do not have to limit ourselves, you know, and and you know, and I was disappointed. I saw someone try to put something out, and it was a it, it was a it was a half-assed narrative, and it, and it was a weak narrative that they put out to make it seem like all we do is lose money, but they don't talk about how we were all over every single outlet last year. You can't put a dollar amount. The dollar amount was fifty million dollars. We were on every single outlet from New York Times, ESPN. They were in the Lakers game. They were talking about us. You can't put a dollar amount on that. But then someone tried to put out a, a nar narrative. I'm not even going to give him credit and name him. Put out a narrative as if all we do is we're a waste. And we're not a waste. You know? And that just pissed me off. And then when I walk out and I see my fans, the fans come out, and we can't get Club Red to come out, that pisses me off. Because why not come out and support us? Why not be a cool school for everybody? Turn on ESPN. There are, there are people out there watching that game. You know? So we got to catch up, man. We're behind. It's disappointing. And it's not going to stop what we do. You know, we're going to win. You know, and people are going to show up when they think it's a big game. And then people love to say, oh, they can't win a big game. Are you kidding me? Have you seen what we have done here since I've arrived? Is this, uh, are we being serious right now? Yeah, the teams we're losing to are top 10 in the country. Oh, like, let's wake up. And then when we win, sometimes it just happens that we're on the road. You know, but we, 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 I'm going to be an advocate for it, and I'm going to always talk about it, and I'm really sick of it. So I'm going to speak on it. And I'm not talking about the people that support us. I, we know them by face, by name. You know, why? Because we're in the community. We love our fans. But it doesn't have to be what it is. This can be an everything school. Do you think this is something that could fuel your team towards the end of the year? Uh, we want to win. We're ball, you know, my team is about winning. We all we got, we all we need. You know, I just know that it, it would be cool I know that when I see teams beat teams, it's a home court advantage. Chris Bear talks about it all the time. I don't want to hear nothing about home court advantage for LSU. Those were not our fans. They were chanting for LSU. You know when we had home court advantage? Last year when we almost beat South Carolina, the number one team in the nation. We almost beat them because we had home court advantage. We, this is not home court advantage for us. I'm just going to be honest. You know, it, it, play home, play away, it don't matter to us. But what if we can make it home court advantage, you know? And I know it's an uphill hill battle. Hell, Lane Kiffin complained about it for the first two years. So I, I know I'm not fighting this fight alone. But, but we have to be better. And so hopefully everybody showed up for him and Coach, Chris, Coach Baird and Bianco, show up for the women's sports because we're out here working too. That kind of supported you tonight. Uh, I don't know if it was a football. I think it was just a regular student. Yeah, I think it was a regular student. It was just a cool guy. Saw my tweet, came out. It was so cool, man. <laughs> I had a couple people that said they would take it, but but they were over forty. Uh, this was this was this, was, and I'm over forty, so uh, this was a younger guy. It was really cool. Big game on Sunday. Come out and support. Three o'clock. Two, two o'clock, three o'clock Eastern, sorry. Thank y'all.